Honey badgers are the most disrespectful force in nature, and that's putting them over orcas. Because at least when an orca shot puts a seal, you can argue it's just testing a new hunting strategy. But honey badgers will look for negativity in situations where they have nothing to gain. Why would a honey badger test an oryx 10 times its size, get launched only to immediately do it again? Because honey badgers come into the world deciding they don't want peace, they want problems. They don't want compromise, they seek conflict. If orcas are homicidal sea oreos, then honey badgers are double stuffed with audacity. If I ever make a list of the top 5 animals with black air force energy, honey badgers would be a first ballot choice. But like any kid that acts out in school, to really understand just what makes a honey badger such a one man hate campaign, you gotta look at its family. When you talk about mammalian carnivores, you can really simplify it into two classes, Team Cat and Team Dog. Team Cat would be Feliform, which translates to cat-like carnivores, which would obviously include wild cats, but also cats that aren't really cats like hyenas, mongooses like the meerkat, and a bunch of other animals you've probably never heard of. On the other side is Caniformia, which are the dog-like carnivores. This includes dogs, wild, unhinged dogs, dogs on steroids, smaller but more street smart dogs, and a special group of water dogs that decided they had enough of the nonsense and disrespect of the dirt world and were going to take their chances out in the ocean. Results have been varied. But you also have another family known as the Mustilidae squad and they were kind of in a weird spot. They weren't the biggest, definitely weren't the fastest, not the smartest, and for the most part they're solitary meaning they rarely have a numbers advantage. So their only real option was to overcompensate the way anyone that overmatched would with violence and borderline crackhead courage. If muscle like honey badgers ran in groups, they probably wouldn't need the personality of a power tool to survive. Because gang violence may be unethical, but in the wild, it's a way of life. It's the reason African wild dogs are one of the most efficient groups at canceling life subscriptions. Because team play is high key underrated. Ants are probably the best used social insects in the game, and it's almost scary how well they work together. Led by a queen who can almost check in at the same weight class as a mouse, ant society is built on a hierarchy where everyone has a job. Female ants are workers who can have tasks such as cleaning the eggs and feeding the larvae. Queen ants job is to supply the ant census with new bodies by constantly spawning eggs and some species can spit out over 800 in one day. Male ants have one job and it's to supply the queen with baby batter and then exit the census once they fulfill that purpose. They have no rights, no free will, they're basically walking ejac packets. And if you ever wanted to know just what ant society is like, the ants underground kingdom is a simulation strategy game with millions of players already online. You can hatch and develop your own ant army, including rare ones like the banshee ant, which is based on an actual insect that isn't really an ant, it's a type of wasp. You can also unlock new buildings like toxic fungi, gorgeous pearl, special nests, and more. Now here's the fun part. The ant armada includes guardian ants, shooter ants, and carrier ants. Plus you can call on reinforcements in the form of scorpions and spiders. It's like Game of Thrones, but with ants. PvE wise, you can run fades with jumping spiders, giant mantises, and more. You can choose what alliances you want to join and then make friends with players from all around the world. And mercilessly backstab them at every turn because there's no church in the wild and hell is not a consequence. Make sure you download the Ants Underground Kingdom. And use the redemption code to cash in on a bunch of benefits the game is offering just in time for the holidays to make sure your army is the strongest one. But if you're a honey badger, the strongest army is always an army of one. Honey badgers could be the mascots of Miralas because they don't ever give them, they just take them. And when I say it runs in a family, you can tell the honey badger took something from all of their cousins and made it theirs. We're gonna get to those cousins, don't worry. But first we gotta talk about what makes honey badgers such a middle finger to the natural order. First is the fact that they're not indestructible, but damn it, they're pretty close. Honey badger's skin is tough and resilient, able to withstand bee stings, snake bites, and brutal maulings that would certainly be a game over for other animals. You could even come at a honey badger with a machete and it could still probably Eurostep any serious injury. There's even reports of these steroid skunks taking down African crested porcupines. The same ones that have about 30,000 good reasons why testing them could be really bad for your health. In really rare occasions, porcupines have crippled the top tier lion so badly that hunting humans was their only option. In 1965, after a lion nicknamed the Man Eater of Darajani was finally put out of commission, it was discovered that it had been gored by a blade beaver, with one of the quills being lodged in its fractured teeth and another one nearly piercing its brain. Maimed and out of options, the starving lion put at least one Kenyan on a t shirt. That's the kind of carnage porcupines are capable of, yet honey badgers can often survive an encounter with one thanks to their tough skin. The same reason they can square up with snakes and then live to try again. Honey badgers are menaces that have been known to turn deadly serpents like the puff adder and even the black mamba into a purse. Common misconception though is that honey badgers are immune to snake venom. They're not immune, they're much more resistant than other animals but enough penetrating bites can flatline even a honey badger. But usually if a honey badger is wounded by a venomous snake, it'll just pass out in an almost coma-like state, only to get up a few hours later and walk it off like a Sunday morning hangover. 
Another fact is that not only is Honey Badger's skin tough, it's incredibly loose, especially around the neck. So if one's ever being mauled by a big cat, this walking cigar can turn around while being attacked and deliver smoke directly to the face. Honey Badgers are furry Duracells and anything short of a round directly to the skull isn't guaranteed to kill them. This durability is why Honey Badgers are either brave enough or stupid enough to blatantly steal from top predators and they usually target leopards. Unlike lions and hyenas, leopards are solitary assassins that hide their prizes high up in the branches where they can't get their pockets picked. The food may be safe from lions, but they're not safe from a malicious equality symbol with nothing to lose. Honey Badgers will risk it all by attempting to steal from a leopard by climbing a tree once it steps away from its meal. If the honey badger gets caught in the act, it'll throw a loud temper tantrum, hissing and screaming as it backs away. A method I'm sure they got from their close cousin, the wolverine. The wolverine is a honey badger on PEDs, built for the freezing tundra of the north. And even though they're roughly in the same weight class as a medium-sized dog, tankier predators like bears and mountain lions will occasionally pay food taxes to this walking vibe check. But the thing with wolverines is, they have the strength and speed to catch their own bodies. Wolverines will stalk a potential victim for hours, even days, and there have been reports of wolverines posting up in trees just so they can wait for the right moment to pounce. But why waste the energy or calories doing that when you can just pickpocket a grizzly or clutch a 2v1 versus wolves? And just like the honey badger, wolverines will attack anything with a pulse. Difference is, they have the tools to actually stop it. One wolverine put a polar bear in a headline after clamping its vice grip jaws around the struggling bear's throat until it suffocated. There have even been reports of a wolverine dropping a female moose by ripping at its shoulder blades until it eventually tapped out. In comparison, honey badgers have allegedly KO'd units like the K buffalo and water buck. Except the honey badger's methods are... different. Wolverines are little man syndrome but with bear trap jaws. Even though they might not have superhuman healing powers, they do have rotated teeth. Wolverines are equipped with upper molars rotated 90 degrees inward, meaning they can easily eat a grizzly bear's leftovers even if it's half frozen. That dental plan is why a wolverine will eat every part of an animal right down to the bones. Honey badgers don't have nearly that kind of power, but these prison striped weasels do pack a nasty bite and they've been seen tearing into tortoises. Wolverines have one more secret and it's that they smell really, really foul. Not only will they use the power of liquid booty as a threat, they'll spray the scent over any food they find to make sure no one else touches it. Which is why the wolverine is also nicknamed the skunk bear. Honey badgers also weaponize their south side. When threatened or just annoyed, the honey badger will reverse its anus inside out and release a liquid so vile it can suffocate anything near it. In fact, the smell is so offensive it can temporarily paralyze attacking bees. It's not hard to see how the skunk bear and the felony ferret pull up to the same family reunion. But you can RSVP the otter to the same function. Otters are considered the most intelligent of all mustelids, and they're a part of the rare group of animals that are able to create and use tools. This one? This one's using a vending machine. In fact, they're so smart that in the 60s, the CIA allegedly tried to weaponize them. I actually made a video on this in the auto report that was created on my TikTok, so definitely go check that out. They're also an anomaly in that they're one of the rare social muscles, which should give you mixed feelings. Because yes, sea otters will hold hands while sleeping so they don't float away. Despite my lack of emotion, I find that adorable. But otters, especially river otters, will jump anything that enters their territory from caiman to jaguars to idiots with iPhones. If you want your idea of otters to be completely slaughtered in 10 seconds, Google otter and attack and count how many articles you get. A pack of 20 nearly took a man off the Singapore census permanently. A group of rogue otters drowned a woman's beloved dog as she could only watch. Once upon a time, a monkey wandered into the otter hood of the Bronx Zoo, and the outnumbered monkey paid the toll for his transgressions with his soul. That's really only scratching the surface. I already have an entire video dedicated to the carnage society lets otters get away with, but one fact should really hammer the point home. Sea otters have a violent mating ritual that involves biting his partner's nose pad so hard that he can tear it off while occasionally holding her head underwater. That is not the disturbing part, because frustrated male otters that couldn't find a mate will resort to taking their lack of options out on baby seals. Something they'll continue to do for up to a week even after the seal's soul has already evacuated. I mean that in the worst possible way. So in a weird twist, out of these three otters might have the lowest morality, but to compensate they have the highest intelligence. Don't think honey badgers are just some crayon eaters, they're incredibly smart too like the kind of smart that would make them high-class criminals. In an experiment, a honey badger couldn't reach a box of food that was hanging from a branch of a tree. But what would have been a dead end for most animals was only a challenge for him. After a few seconds to carefully weigh his options, the honey badger proceeded to push his crate closer to the hanging box to the point where he could stand on it to claim his prize. It might not seem like much, but being able to figure this out automatically puts honey badgers in the highest percentile when it comes to animal intelligence. But the best example would be this little guy named Stoffel. Stoffel was a well-known escape artist that would find some of the most creative ways to end his bondage. In one of his many escapes, Stoffel noticed a broom that had been left near him, dragged it over to one of the corners of his enclosure, leaned it against the wall, and then used it to emancipate himself. 
They tested his skills with a gate and stall for the Black Air Force managed to undo the latches of the lock. They then put him in a cell surrounded by cement walls. Take a wild guess what this little weasel did. Stoffel dug up a bunch of rocks and when he had enough he piled them in a corner and Andy Dufresne himself. One night his caretaker awoke to a burglar in his home at 1am. You know where I'm going with this. Stoffel escaped again, only this time he broke into the farmer's house and even tried to get into his bedroom. And you want to know the most disrespectful part of it all? Stoffel was hand raised by humans at a young age and imprinted on them. Meaning Stoffel had no intention of actually escaping. Nah, he was just doing it for the sport and for all the memes. And we know that because Stoffel would allow himself to be caught and return back to his enclosure just so he could figure out another way to make his caretakers earn their pay. Breaking into the farmer's house past midnight was just grade A trolling. And of course, it would be criminal to not mention that time Stoffel escaped his enclosure and entered the lion's den where he was nearly brutally mauled to death. After he recovered, the first thing Stoffel did fresh out was try to find a way back to the lions to settle the score. Stoffel would also regularly break into the lodge kitchen where he would harass staff and help himself to any food he could find. They eventually gave him a lady badger thinking that would help him calm down. What they really did was introduce the Bonnie to his Clyde as they would now try to escape together. For their size, honey badgers have relatively large brains and they make it everyone's problem. But there's one more thing about them that really makes them a menace to society and for that you have to look at its third cousin, the stoat. The stoat is one of the smallest of all muscles, yet they regularly put prey 10 times their size out of commission. They do this by relentlessly chasing their prey, which are usually rabbits, until the prey eventually drops to exhaustion. Only then will the stoat deliver a devastating bite to the back of the skull. And once a stoat locks in on its target, there isn't a force in nature that can stop it. The stoat is so hyper fixated that it'll even ignore rabbits that might be closer just so they can commit to pursuing its original target. That crackhead determination is not foreign to the honey badger. The only way a honey badger can fend off leopards, hyenas, and even the occasional lion is by constantly squirming, hissing, and biting until the attacker eventually decides it's not worth the calories. Even if they eventually do go out of commission, you can be sure the honey badger did not go quietly. The badger's stubborn nature is probably best summed up when you see what they do for honey. Honey badgers love breaking into beehives to eat energy-rich honeycombs. Unfortunately, that often means getting a face full of African bees, which are more aggressive and more nasty than their European cousins. But these honey weasels will continue to eat even while being actively swarmed and attacked by bees. And even though they're resistant, they're not 100% immune to bee stings. Honey badgers have been known to keep raiding the same beehive for honey until they eventually get stung to death. But honey badgers don't care, they live life balls first with no fear of consequences. This willpower is how two honey badgers step to six young lionesses and still manage to survive. At one point the honey badger found itself in the jaws of death only to use its loose skin to turn around and bite the lion back. This leopard tried harassing a young baby badger only to end up cosplaying as a cheetah once mama badger inserted herself into the conversation. Speaking of cheetahs, honey badgers have such a reputation that it's widely believed that cheetah cups evolved to mimic their coloring to avoid confrontation with predators. A whole predatory cat and evolution forced them to impersonate an African bush weasel just to get more respect. Hell for cheetahs, but another notch on a honey badger's chastity belt. I say chastity because they don't give a f With the strength and durability of a wolverine, the intelligence and morale deficit of an otter, the pure coke-fueled willpower of the stoat, the honey badger is the only thing alive that can make a bowl cut intimidating. And that's gonna do it for this video, which was by far one of my most fun to make. If you want to support this channel, my Patreon's gonna be in the description. Also, like the video or suffer a honey badger vasectomy. Other than that, drink water, hug your parents, happy holidays, and see you in the next one.